Hi everyone and welcome back. Now in today's video we are going to discuss about one of the very important configurations as part of the virtual private network which is split tunneling. Now before we explore the benefits that split tunneling provides, let's look into the typical challenge when you configure the VPN. Now generally whenever a VPN is configured by default, the configuration that is set related to routing will lead to all of the client traffic to be routed through VPN. And in many of the popular VPNs, this is one of the standard configurations. For example, you have a client on the left, you have the VPN server and you have internal network and you have the internet. So at this stage, whenever a client sends a request to the private IP addresses of the instances in the internal network, this will be routed through VPN and VPN will go ahead and send it to the appropriate destination. This is completely fine. However, Whenever client sends a request to a public website, for example, google.com, again that request will go to the VPN server and from there it will be routed to the appropriate destination. So generally what is happening is all of the client traffic is being routed at a VPN server level. Now generally when you're using a personal VPN and you want to ensure that none of the traffic can be snooped at ISP level, this is a perfect configuration. This will not work for the internal network, but all of the public traffic, it is completely fine. But whenever you are using a corporate VPN, which is primarily designed to allow you to connect to the internal network. And if that VPN server is also receiving all of your public traffic, this is something which is not beneficial in most of the cases. So in order to overcome that, we have a feature of split tunneling in VPN. Now in this approach, what happens is all of the traffic towards the internal network of your organization will go through the VPN server and all other traffic apart from the destination of internal network will go through the internet. And this is something that we need. We do not want everything to go towards the corporate VPN server. And this feature which allows this is what we refer to as split tunnel. Now let's look into some of the benefits that split tunnel based architecture provides. One of the better benefit here is that it leads to higher speeds as traffic need not be routed to a VPN server. For example, if all of the traffic is routed through the VPN server even to the internet, this acts as a proxy. Sometimes the VPN server can slow down and in such cases all of your traffic towards the internet will also slow down. Second disadvantage here is that you will see that the connection from client to VPN is completely encrypted and when encryption is in place and you have a lot of traffic, it can lead to a little slowness. So when you have a split tunnel based approach, your traffic is directly going towards the internet and depending upon your overall ISP speed, you will get the maximum bandwidth. So this is the first important benefit. Second important benefit from corporate side is that you can reduce the volume of outgoing traffic from VPN and therefore reducing the data transfer cost. Always know that cloud provider also charges for the data transfer cost. So if so much traffic from all of your clients in the organization is going through VPN and from the VPN it is going to the internet, same from internet to VPN and from VPN to the user. So when VPN is acting as a middleman, not only it can slow things down, but the data transfer cost will also increase. And this is not something which organization would like. All right. And this is the reason why split tunneling is very important part that you need to implement whenever you're implementing the VPN for your organization. Now, when we discuss about the AWS client VPN, again, you will see a similar type of configuration where by default, all of the traffic from client is routed over the client VPN tunnel. All right. So whenever you connect to the client VPN, the routes are pushed from VPN to the client here to redirect all the traffic through the client VPN. So this default behavior overrides the client's route table with the entry of 0000 to route all of the traffic over the VPN. Now this default configuration as we know is not suitable for a lot of organization and if you'd like, you will be able to modify it at a client VPN level. So in order to enable split tunnel, the configuration is very simple. You just have to enable it from the VPN configuration page. And once you do that, AWS will push the routes that you have set at a client VPN endpoint route table to the device that is connected to the client VPN endpoint. 
So let's do one thing before we proceed further. Let's go ahead and quickly look into it from both without split tunnel based approach and split tunnel based approach so that we understand the true benefits. Now currently I have a client VPN endpoint that is available and this VPN endpoint is not enabled with the split tunneling. If I have to show you, you see the split tunnel option is deselected. So it is not enabled. Now whenever you connect to this client VPN endpoint. Now before we do that, if you look into what's my IP address, in fact, let me refresh it so that we can avoid the confusion. Now at this stage, my ISP has given me two IP addresses. One is the IPv4 address and second one is the IPv6 address. So now let's go ahead and quickly connect to the client VPN endpoint and we'll see on what exactly changes. Now from the open VPN app, Let's go ahead and quickly connect here. And as expected, we are connected. Now, as soon as we have connected, if I refresh the page, you see something went wrong due to some reason. My AWS console is not really working. In fact, if I open up one more page here related to AWS, you see none of them are working after I connected to the VPN. Now, if you look into what is my IP address, let me refresh this. Something will change here. Now the IPv6 address is still present. However, the IPv4 you see it is stating not detected. So the IPv4 address went away. Now the reason why IPv6 address is detecting is because the client VPN does not support IPv6 traffic through the client VPN endpoints. All right. So this is one of the reasons why. So let's do one thing. Let's go ahead and quickly disconnect it. And I'll just refresh and you see things are working. That's great. So generally what we do initially whenever the client VPN endpoint is configured, we add a route table here and in the route table we say 0000, 000 and we also select the subnet ID. All right. So at the VPN level, we have added the appropriate route. So now what will happen is the traffic anyways, it is reaching the client VPN endpoint, but the routing part is also completed now. So now once the traffic reaches the client VPN endpoint and the destination is 0000, it will go towards the internet from AWS side. So let's quickly refresh. This is active and now let's go ahead and quickly connect to VPN again. This time we are connected. Now when you refresh the what is my IP page again, this time you see that we got a IPv4 and this IPv4 does not belong to me. It is routed through AWS. So if I'll quickly do a IP lookup, let's add the IP address. And this time you see the country is Singapore and the ISP is Amazon data services. Now why the country is Singapore? Because this client VPN endpoint is running in the Singapore region. All right. And this is the reason why by default, if split tunneling is not enabled, you have to ensure to add this specific route. Now at this stage, what we want, we want internet to work perfectly well, but through my ISP and any traffic through the internal network should only be going through the VPN and other traffic. My ISP can handle pretty well. I do not want it to go through my client VPN endpoint. Otherwise I'll unnecessarily get a higher data transfer charges. So let's do one thing. Let's remove this route because we will be enabling split tunnel. So we don't need this specific route here. Let's quickly wait for a moment here. So it looks like my internet is not working again and it is primarily because I'm still connected to the VPN. I'll disconnect it and great that route got removed. So now what we'll do? Again, you don't have to do it, but you can just observe it in case if you have the VPN endpoint, you can also try it out. But I just want to keep it simple because these things are quite expensive as well. So let me modify it and let's just enable the split tunnel and I'll modify the client VPN endpoint. All right. Now let's quickly verify if I'll refresh the state is available in the split tunnel. You see it is enabled. So now let's connect back to the VPN as expected. We are connected this time. Let's quickly look into the IP address. 
and you see I got a different IP and if I'll quickly do a IP lookup here. This time it is saying country as India. Alright, so I hope with this you understood the benefit of split tunnel based approach and how you can configure it as part of the client VPN endpoint. Now before we conclude, there are some pointers that you have to keep a note of. First one is that if you have the split tunnel enabled, then it is not recommended to add a 0000 route to the client VPN endpoints route table. Now this is only useful when you do not have the split tunnel mode enabled. The second important pointer is that when you have split tunnel enabled, whenever you modify the route table, it will result in the client connection being reset. So this is one part to keep a note of. And the third part is that currently the client VPN service does not support routing the IPv6 traffic through the VPN tunnel. Now before we conclude, I also wanted to show you because here we have tested the internet part but we have not tested whether the VPN will be able to connect to the instance through the private IP. So let's copy the private IP of any of the instances and if split tunnel is working, we should be able to connect and as expected, we are able to not only connect to the internal network through the VPN, but we are also able to connect to the internet directly through the ISP bypassing the VPN. So that's a high level overview. Now note that split tunnel feature is not just related to AWS. It is related to any VPN that you configure. And this is the reason why split tunnel topic proves to be very important. So with this we'll conclude today's video.